it was horrible, obviously, just totally unthinkable. Uh, my partner's sister and brother-in-law are the lead singers in Bukman Experience, and so our initial couple of days was just total dread and anxiety, wondering how they were doing. Once we learned that they and these three nieces that we have were okay, uh, we started looking at what was going on and paying attention. I started doing a lot of writing. And we noticed, you know, on the musical angle, people were singing even the next day in the streets. Richard Morse from the band Ram was tweeting throughout the days. He still is, uh, you know, two weeks later. And he was writing that as dusk fell, you could hear singing in all sorts of neighborhoods in Port-au-Prince. And, you know, I think that singing was a way for people to run energy through the body and even through the group. It's a way to be in space and to inhabit space, to make a space inhabitable. If you figure that much of Port-au-Prince became a space of death within 30 seconds, singing brought life into the space. Some people were left with only the clothes they were wearing and the breath in their lungs and they used the breath to, to reach for life. Um, people were singing outside in groups while they were sleeping outside, and a lot of it was Protestant hymns. A lot of it was Protestant hymns. And I noticed uh, NPR actually sent what they call an audio postcard. They sent uh, this clip of this song, Jericho Muakrasé, which means Jericho, the wall is crashing down. And I had just been writing about that song in an article I was writing, about how Haitians, uh, through hymns, through song, feel themselves to be in biblical landscape. And I think for many people, they thought this was the apocalypse. This was the apocalypse, Jesus is coming back, uh, Jericho is crashing. So I've been thinking about that song, and you know, Wyclef also used that song back in 2002 in his song, in his song Ghetto Racine, on the Masquerade album, he put a little clip of Jericho Muakrasé right in the middle of this kind of jam at the end of the song. Um, speaking of Wyclef, he did an amazing job at the Hope for Haiti telethon. He sang the song, I think he started out with a, a reggae tune, he went into his sort of ballad, yele, kind of almost a Protestant hymn feeling, and then he ended up, it up with this incredible rara, the traditional festival music that I actually have researched a lot about and wrote, wrote a book about. And in that little short rara segment, which he wrote clearly for the telethon, he, uh, he called out uh, Jimmy O, who was killed in the quake. He was a rapper that Wyclef had been, had been uh, signing, had signed on his label. He called a shout out to T. Cliff and to Fanfan, who were killed in the quake. And uh, then he went out saying, Ozana, Ozana, which is the name of a Rara band in Port-au-Prince. So Wyclef just did a stupendous job bringing, you know, bringing us from kind of the ballad and the heartbreak through the rebuild energy and through the we will survive energy. Um, so it's been interesting to watch how Haitians are using music to sort of deal with the quake.